somewhat. <laughs> um, we'll be taking a different tack, though, from the um, last uh, PowerPoint and focusing on uh, smart regulatory innovations for an integrated grid, uh, but trying to Can you, impart. Can you bring the second mic as well, close to you? Trying to impart um, some lessons learned uh, in the United States. Um, let me see, where is this? Is that it? Yeah, okay. I was searching for it, sorry. Um, now, I personally do see um, a sea change represented in India's smart grid vision and roadmap. I think it does represent a new vision for a very changing, dramatically changing landscape. Uh, it sets some very significant targets for distributed resources, and I think it, um, in these targets, is anticipating uh, proliferating distributed and renewable resources that will create new points of power injection and variability at the edge. Uh, it does represent a major shift from highly centralized, target-driven supply push to combining decentralized energy elements and reorienting to customer demand-driven strategies using smart technologies. Um, paramount um, market drivers in India have been um, India's renewable energy distributed resource, smart city policies, technology advancements, and customer energy access needs and choice. Um, these forces of change are growing great opportunities to achieve India's policy objectives, such as universal energy access, electricity reliability and resiliency, greenhouse gas emissions, reduction, environmental quality, sustainable economic growth and development. But all of this is also um, changing the value proposition of renewable energy and distributed energy resources, covering a wider range of applications and new roles for clean distributed energy as customer solutions and to support the grid and market. Um, to me, this is all calling and really urging the need for new distributed, uh, new distribution system planning, investment and control models. And that's what I'm going to focus on in this talk today and relate to you uh, some of the efforts in the United States in this regard. And um, at the heart of this is the smart grid challenge to move using smart grid technologies from uh, variability to reliability and long-term customer value. Distributed energy resources can deliver net benefits to customers, the grid, and society. Um, and by distributed energy resources, I'm referring to electricity sources that are interconnected to the grid in an approved manner at or below IEEE medium voltage, and also can either generate electricity using any primary fuel source or store energy and supply that electricity to the grid or involve load changes undertaken by end-use customers in response to a price or other inducement. And here are a listing of the types of benefits, uh, consumer benefits, reducing electricity uh, bills, um, more choice, cleaner options, grid benefits, uh, potentially voltage and power quality, conservation voltage regulation, grid reliability and resiliency, equipment life extension, increased asset utilization and system efficiency. And uh, societal benefits as well can come from uh, distributed energy resources, including grid resiliency and reliability, environmental, energy efficiency, customer service options and choices. But it's a double-edged sword. Um, Dura impacts can have both positive and negative effects on the distribution system and increasing volumes with the diversity and the characteristics and depending on the locations. Um, as I said, it could go negative as well as positive. So there's a need to weigh the benefits. And this is also why Smart Grid plays such a critical role in terms of capturing uh, these DER and renewable energy benefits. Uh, the Smart Grid potential lies in its abilities, capabilities to create the conditions at the utility distribution systems level for new electricity resources to achieve India's policy objectives. 
Uh, this potential relates to expanding and modifying electri electrification from source to sink, enabling two-way power, information and transactional flows, and allowing customers to benefit from dynamic pricing and distributed energy. Smart grid can increase market value and support more widespread use of DER combining power engineering, sensing and monitoring technology, innovation, communications technologies with legacy elements of transmission and distribution. And most significantly, uh, these capabilities enable visibility, predictability, interoperability, integration, forecasting, flexibility, and event control to generation delivery and end use, to integrate intermittent renewables and distributed resources, reduce peak demand and outages, increase system efficiencies and asset utilization, manage and optimize uh, distributed resources. But uh, we're looking at uh, the need for a new paradigm and regulatory um, frameworks that will support investment in a new paradigm. And here I'm speaking of which I think a lot of our audience has been prepping for in the last few days. But thank you, Larissa. Well, somewhat. <laughs> um, we'll be taking a different tack, though, from the um, last uh, PowerPoint and focusing on uh, smart regulatory innovations for an integrated grid, uh, but trying to Can you, impart... Can you bring the second mic as well, close to you? Trying to impart um, some lessons learned uh, in the United States. Um, let me see, where is this? Is that it? Yeah, okay. I was searching for it, sorry. Um, now, I personally do see um, a sea change represented in India's smart grid vision and roadmap. I think it does represent a new vision for a very changing, dramatically changing landscape. Uh, it sets some very significant targets for distributed resources, and I think it, um, in these targets, is anticipating uh, proliferating distributed and renewable resources that will create new points of power injection and variability at the edge. Uh, it does represent a major shift from highly centralized, target-driven supply push to combining decentralized energy elements and reorienting to customer demand-driven strategies using smart technologies. Um, paramount um, market drivers in India have been um, India's renewable energy distributed resource, smart city policies, technology advancements, and customer energy access needs and choice. Um, these forces of change are growing great opportunities to achieve India's policy objectives, such as universal energy access, electricity reliability and resiliency, greenhouse gas emissions, reduction, environmental quality, sustainable economic growth and development. But all of this is also um, changing the value proposition of renewable energy and distributed energy resources, covering a wider range of applications and new roles for clean distributed energy as customer solutions and to support the grid and market. Um, to me, this is all calling and really urging the need for new distributed, uh, new distribution system planning, investment and control models. And that's what I'm going to focus on in this talk today and relate to you uh, some of the efforts in the United States in this regard. And um, at the heart of this is the smart grid challenge to move using smart grid technologies from uh, variability to reliability and long-term customer value. Distributed energy resources can deliver net benefits to customers, the grid, and society. Um, and by distributed energy resources, I'm referring to electricity sources that are interconnected to the grid in an approved manner at or below IEEE medium voltage, and also can either generate electricity using any primary fuel source or store energy and supply that electricity to the grid or involve load changes undertaken by end-use customers in response to a price or other inducement. And here are a listing of the types of benefits, uh, consumer benefits, reducing electricity uh, bills, um, more choice, cleaner options, grid benefits, uh, potentially voltage and power quality, conservation voltage regulation, grid reliability and resiliency, equipment life extension, increased asset utilization and system efficiency. 
and uh, societal benefits as well can come from uh, distributed energy resources, including grid resiliency and reliability, environmental, energy efficiency, customer service options and choices. But it's a double-edged sword. Um, Dura impacts can have both positive and negative effects on the distribution system and increasing volumes with the diversity and the characteristics and depending on the locations. Um, as I said, it could go negative as well as positive. So there's a need to weigh the benefits and this is also why Smart Grid plays such a critical role in terms of capturing uh, these DER and renewable energy benefits. Uh, the smart grid potential lies in its abilities, capabilities to create the conditions at the utility distribution systems level for new electricity resources to achieve India's policy objectives. Uh, this potential relates to expanding and modifying electri electrification from source to sink, enabling two-way power, information and transactional flows, and allowing customers to benefit from dynamic pricing and distributed energy. Smart Grid can increase market value and support more widespread use of DER combining power engineering, sensing and monitoring technology, innovation, communications technologies with legacy elements of transmission and distribution. And most significantly, uh, these capabilities enable visibility, predictability, interoperability, integration, forecasting, flexibility, and event control to generation delivery and end use to integrate intermittent renewables and distributed resources, reduce peak demand and outages, increase system efficiencies and asset utilization, manage and optimize uh, distributed resources. But uh, we're looking at uh, the need for a new paradigm and regulatory um, frameworks that will support investment in a new paradigm and here I'm speaking of an integrated grid, one that can take fully into account and value DER in utility planning, investments, operations, and trading. This new paradigm will involve expanded electricity value change boundaries, the integration of new resources and technologies, new market players, prosumers, third parties in electricity markets, and regulatory innovations to change the current paradigm and utility business model to achieve policy objectives while maintaining reliability, safety, and affordability. In the United States, a lot of the efforts at the state and federal level have been focused on developing uh, for the future using smart uh, grid technologies, an interactive, flexible, and innovative grid. A highly flexible, configurable, and interactive networks of utility, customer, and third-party applications, market data, price signals, and transactions, system of systems, as we've spoken in this conference, operations for DER integration and load side management, and an integrated grid in which all electricity resources are treated as primary resources. Um, as I mentioned, though, this calls for a new utility distribution system model, and I'd like to um, here emphasize what California has been doing in involving a new utility distribution system paradigm, uh, one that can respond to dynamically changing market conditions and manage customer side resources. Uh, and this has uh, transmission system-like functions, uh, but in this case to manage distribution operations. But these uh, functions that I'm going to mention, highlights of this paradigm, uh, will indicate um, quite a revolution in terms of uh, capabilities, functionalities that are needed to address distributed energy resources and functionalities that the distribution system has not historically undertaken, like maintaining reliable distribution system operation with two-way multi-point reversible power flows with increasing volume and diversity of distributed resources, integrating and balancing distributed resources and load to shape load profile and peak demand and to enable multifunction uh, DER to provide services to bulk uh, power, achieving functional control of DER for real-time balancing and flexibility, and services such as reactive power and frequency control to local and bulk grid, and with this also modeling and forecasting load and DER growth. So two minutes. Uh, this will could, also, yeah. pardon me? Yeah, if you could, uh, two-minute warning. Um, I'm sorry, but I was asked to prepare a 15-minute. I am breaking it down to 10 minutes. Thank you. Okay? 
um, and this one. would be defining and managing the boundary between transmission and distribution to reliably and optimally operate the whole power system. It also requires addressing change, the changing nature and characteristics of new resources and the changing nature of customers. Um, in the United States, California and New York in particular are evolving new regulatory frameworks to achieve their policy objectives and to align utility financial interests to create long-term customer value. Uh, significantly, these regulatory um, innovations that they are evolving are designed to value system-based investments and operation protocols that can drive distribution, utility, efficiency, and innovation. Um, in terms of evolving new regulatory uh, frameworks, uh, California, New York, Texas, Massachusetts, and other states in the United States have had um, these objectives for a distributed energy future to align utility financial interests and incentives to create long-term customer value, shift from meeting peak capacity and building more to profit, to load profiling and optimizing investments from measuring megawatts sold to measure, measuring value creation from selling commodities to providing infrastructure as a service. Uh, they are addressing in their regulatory efforts traditional assumptions that are now being challenged by distributed resources like there is little role for customers to play in addressing system needs and centralized generation and bulk transmission invariably yield cost-effective results. These regulatory frameworks that are being involved are addressing value design and rules, value in terms of developing new uh, distributed energy resource cost-benefit analytical frameworks and integrated distribution resource planning. Uh, developing the regulatory frameworks that can incent investment in a new 3.0 integrated grid designed to realize their benefits through cost-effective distribution system level architecture functions, interactive platforms and delivery systems, and rules that change the incentives of traditional rate making, cost of recovery, rate design, to make utility decision making indifferent to ownership and focused on achieving the most cost-effective solutions as well as shaping new utility business and service delivery models. In particular, California has developed a framework for DER valuation and distribution resources planning. What is significant about this framework is that it is mandating by its investor-owned utilities the use of uniform consistent and verifiable methodologies for assessing integration capacity at uh, distribution circuits and feeders and in determining optimal location uh, benefits for siting uh, DERM. Uh, they're calling, requirements are calling for demonstrations and deployments uh, to test and validate these methodologies and very significantly calling upon the utilities to develop frameworks for data access, transparency, and sharing. Uh, so all of this is essentially so calling for minutes. proactive DER planning uh, to evaluate barriers for DER development and take the steps uh, to really evaluate um, uh, load and DER adoption, modeling uh, DER impacts on transmission and distribution, determining net benefits of DER based on location and timing, to be able to compare the cost effectiveness of DER options with traditional investments. And then based on these analyses to develop the type of policies uh, to source DER at right, the right place and time, uh, such as using tariffs, contracts, competitive solicitations. Another important building block, though, is developing a common evaluation of the costs and benefits of DER so that you can compare and monetize the benefits and costs relating to impacts of DER adoption at low and high levels on distribution systems with different loads and design and serving different electricity demands. Uh, to be able to monetize DER impacts to determine net benefits and to compare DER solutions to mitigate adverse impacts on a uh, distribution system and to improve system performance with traditional investments. Um, uh, we will need regulatory frameworks to support investment, as I said, in a 3.0 integrated grid. Uh, and this is one that will 
uh, necessitate open source architectures, standards, and protocols and configurations to achieve interoperability, integration, and flexibility, and to facilitate competitive transactions in the support of Durham. Um, most of the states that are um, emblazoning um, uh, new regulatory frameworks are operating on um, a common set of principles, pretty much. Um, and here are some of the following, uh, uh, most significantly realigning utility incentives to deliver safety, reliability, and affordability, as well as to create long-term customer value, regardless of ownership and service models, to overcome structural biases of the legacy system, align utility earning opportunities with customer value, and to reform traditional economic uh, regulation to achieve more efficient allocation between capital and operating expenses and to incent continuous improvement and, um, and innovation. Developing a more results-based uh, utility regulatory model, provide accurate and appropriate uh, value signals, and assure fairness and equity to all customers, whether or not they install DUR as well as achieve policy uh, objectives. I'll just finally want to point out some significant uh, reforms going on in the New York Reforming Energy Vision. Um, in this proceeding, New York is developing a distributed system platform, which will allow distributed resources to be tracked, forecast, and traded within the um, distribution system and using smart grid technologies. New York's retail platform will be planned, designed, and operated to achieve its state policy, energy policy objectives. And here are the types of elements that are envisioned, uh, which are quite progressive, retail level energy markets and markets for new products and services, market-based DER contribution to system balancing, flexibility and reliability, demand management on day ahead and real-time basis, expanded access to system information by customers and DER providers to calculate time-based and location-based values, demand response tariffs, including tariffs for storage, regulatory oversight of providers and limitations on the ownership of DERS by distribution utilities. Uh, the New York Reg is reforming the role and responsibilities of utility distribution companies into distribution system providers. Um, these utility distribution providers will source DER products and services through competitive uh, processes and manage and coordinate a wide range of distributed energy resources to place more efficient demands on, bulk, on the bulk uh, power system while reducing the need for costly distribution system capital investments. New York is reorienting the utility business model into a kind of infrastructure as service model with a multi-sided platform that will provide comprehensive customer services, including DER. And this um, uh, distribution system platform aims to foster broad market activity that monetizes system and social values. They're changing rate designs and pricing methods to provide truer costing of electricity. Um, and the utility business model reforms include greater use of performance incentives, opportunities for market-based earnings, and removing disincentives to using cost-effective third-party and operating resources. And very importantly, they are seeking to provide dynamic price signals and rate design that reflects the value of grid service to customers and the value of DER to the grid. And I'll stop with that. <laughs>